Hello everyone, hopefully you are able to see, see my screen. Okay, thanks. So we will start in a minute. Meanwhile, uh, I guess you know the course website and in here we have the lab dates. Labs are not every week, so it's going to be only in certain weeks. And if there is a change in the schedule, we will send an email about you. But for now, this is going to be uh, the dates that we are going to have a lab. And also the last two labs are going to be for the project. And this term for the project, uh, there will be a separate TA that's grading the stages. So usually uh, we do section by section but this term Mohammed is not available for either of our uh, lab hours so I will be teaching the labs and Mohammed will uh, grade the project stages but for the final demos we will again share uh, and we are going to talk more about the project stages later on So let's start with uh, this lab. So basically we focus on the project during the labs and you don't need to upload anything, but uh, it's a good idea to follow our steps during the labs. And to do that, we are going to also send you some instructions for the later labs uh, for installing some of the required software for this lab. We are using Draw.io, which is an online tool, so you don't need to install anything. But for the later stages, we are going to use Python and also we are going to use SQL uh, Lite Studio for creating databases. And when the time comes, we are going to send you some instructions about how to install them, etc. The labs will be in a tutorial-like fashion. So you don't need to like uh, finish something and upload it, but it helps if you are able to follow what we are doing and replicate it on your uh, devices. And these will be like similar to the project stages. So in, this, uh, in the project, you have several stages, starting with the design stage number one. In there, you need to draw an ER diagram but to do that, we want you to use Draw.io, which is a software for drawing general diagrams. We are going to see how to use it for ER diagrams. And in design stage two, you need to refine your ER diagram and also prepare a relational schema. We are going to also talk about that. For the implementation stages, you start implementing, you create your database. And in the final demo, uh, you showcase your database, basically. And for now, you are given the data requirements of your project. It's basically a project description. You need to use it to draw the ER diagram. We are going to do a small example of it today. And later on, you are going to be given functional requirements. In the functional requirements, there are going to be some scenarios, some user scenarios. It will be saying like, login as a student, enroll to a course, list all the available courses, etc. The, they will be about uh, the later stages of the project using a graphical user interface. So for now, we are starting with Draw.io. And uh, for the newcomers, the lab schedule is available on the website. And those dates, we have a lab, not in every week. So let's start with some summary. Uh, why we need a database. So if I want to store some students, let's say, I can just use a text file. In that text file, I can store the content that I need for each student. For example, let's say I need the ID, name and surname of the students to be stored. And for this information, why do I need a database? I can just open a text file and write this information to there, or it could be some any, any file. Why do we need a database? But then if I need to do such operations let's say i would like to insert a new student i can just edit at the beginning or at the end of my text file but if i need to check whether a student with id 3 
12 is in my list or not. Then if this is not ordered, I need to look at each of my items in the text file. I need to check everything. If I want to delete something again, I need to first find uh, such entry in my file that has this ID. If I want to list the students, for example, whose surname starts with the letter D, I need to look at my whole file. And if this file is very big, if I have millions of st students, it becomes inefficient. I need to load it to my uh, device so it can be stored in a slow access device, meaning, for example, our hard drive. And to use it on our computers, we need to bring it to the RAM, but the RAM storage is limited. It might not fit into, into the RAM. It could be a huge data. So for such cases, using a database system uh, becomes a good thing to do because database systems, they offer methods to quickly access and modify lots of data. For example, if these students are ordered by their ID, there are some quick access mechanisms, for example, a B plus three, which you are going to see in the lectures later on. It can be used for fast access to any of our entries in this table. Also database systems, it can store relational data. Let's say I have a bunch of students stored in my system. I can also store a bunch of courses and I can also store a relation such as enrolled. Enrolled is by itself uh, not meaningful, but combining it with the student and course tables, I know which student is enrolled to which course in this table. It's called a relation. Uh, and in a database, whenever I try to insert some data into the enrolled table, I can make sure that this ID of the student belongs to an existing student. And I can also ensure that this course ID that I'm writing into the enrolled table, it is going to belong to some existing course. So with a database, I can uh, make sure that this integrity rules are satisfied. Furthermore, using a database system, it can access by multiple users. For example, the database could be an online database. In this course, we are going to do it on the local only, but you can upload your database uh, to a server and different computers could access this database. And they could be doing some uh, operations that are going to use the shared data. For example, if I'm trying to insert a student with this ID, and at the same time, if I'm trying to update some existing student's ID to this same ID, and some other user, if that is also trying to delete this student with, some, with the same ID. So how to handle these different operations? It is going to be also a later topic in uh, the lecture, but the database makes sure that these are handled without any failure cases. Furthermore, we can design queries to show or update the data in different ways. And this will be the topic for lab number two. We are going to design some interesting queries, for example, some queries examples, list the name of the students who are enrolled in more than five courses with just a text file I can scan my data, okay, but then it is hard to find these different relations in my data. With a database, this becomes very easy to do. But for these benefits, we need to first design the database based on our requirements. So in the project as well, you are given some data requirements and we need to make our design to solve this problem. But while solving this, uh, we try to avoid redundancy. So for example, in our student table, we store the name and surname of the students in this table. I can easily also include the name and surname of the students into the enroll table. So instead of just having the ID, I can also have the name and surname of the student that is enrolled to a course. But then 
In this enroll table, if you look closer, one student can appear more than once because a student can take more than one classes, more than one courses. Then I will be wasting space because I already know, for example, the ID 312 belongs to James, but in the enroll table, if I am replicating this data, data I will be wasting some space. And to design our uh, yeah, uh, to design our database, we are going to use entity relationship diagrams. And in this diagram, we have entity sets, we have relationships and attributes, basically. We are also going to talk about some special uh, cases of relationships. But this diagram basically shows what we store in our database. So this is about storing. Some of the requirements of the project will be about functionality, but this is going to be first about the data requirements. We are basically illustrating the logical structure of the database. There are different styles of ER diagrams and in the course we expect you to one that is introduced in the class so if you search for er diagrams you will see like different styles but to be able to communicate clearly we want you to use the one that we introduce in the class and here we see a database description so this is going to be our example throughout the labs so this is similar to what you your project description is I'm not going to read through them for now because I'm going to focus on the sentences later on. But let's start by remembering some of the elements of an ER diagram. Starting first with an entity set. So it is the collection of entities that have the same set of attributes. The same set of attributes is something important. Let's also uh, talk about attributes which is which is the properties of entities for example if i would like to store students the attributes of the students could be their id number their name and surname but something that is not common is not going to be an attribute for example if i want to store the plate number of the students who have a car let's say then if many of the students does not have a car, I will be, for example, this is some table, if I were to include a plate number column, and if it is not used by majority of the students, then I will be kind of wasting space because whenever I insert a row to my table or to my uh, list of items, to my entity sets, I allocate space for each of these attributes. So the attributes should be somehow common among the entities that I'm going to store. So for example, for a student name, surname, ID. With entity sets, we use the rectangles in the ER diagram. So anything that is inside a rectangle is an entity set. and we always write the uh, name into these shapes. So, so for example, for attributes, we are using ellipses and the name of the attribute is going to be inside that ellipse shape. There are special kinds of attributes. So any attribute that is underlined means that it's a primary key for that entity set. And with attributes to say that these belong to this entity, we use solid lines to connect them. So we need to connect an attribute to an entity. So in our ER diagram, every attribute should be connected to exactly one entity. And primary key means that it's indexed, it should be unique, and it is the way of selecting a unique row in our data sets. So going back to the student table, for example, some students could have the same name. Let's say I have another student row here with different information. Maybe the surname could be exactly the same. But to discriminate these two different students, we need something unique to the, those students. And that's the primary key of that table. Primary key 
could be consisting of multiple attributes as well. So for example, uh, it can be ID plus some other unique number or the combination of these different attributes could be unique so that I'm able to find a unique row. Why do I need to be able to find a unique row? Because to operate on our data, let's say I'm trying to delete some specific thing. To reach that specific thing, I need the uh, ID, for example, to also sort the data, to retrieve data, the primary keys are helping. So for an entity, there could be multiple primary keys or it could be a single primary key, one of its attributes. And for every entity, there should be some primary key. Otherwise, without the primary key, the entity does not make much sense. So in your ER diagram, uh, based on the description, try to find some primary key for all of the entities. If the description does not talk about some unique attributes, then you can find uh, or then you can make up some new attribute as the primary key. So in the description there, so we are going to get some parts of the description. So this is the whole description. It says you are going to design a database for a school. Users of the system have a unique ID number, name, surname and password. So from here, I know that I need to store some users in my database. And for each user, I need name, ID, surname and password. These are going to be my attributes. And since ID number is unique, I can make it the primary key of my user table. So we are using rectangles for entity sets. For attributes, we are using ellipse shapes. And one attribute is connected to one entity set using a solid line. So solid line means that this is not a dashed line. This is not a thick line. This is some simple line. If it was not saying a unique ID number, I could have made up some uh, primary key as well with, with saying ID, for example, or maybe I could make it up saying SSN because I need some unique attributes. Let's talk about easy relationships first. So it defines a hierarchy between our entity sets. So usually we use this if we have a parent entity and some children entities for for this case for example it could be the the parent side could be the user entity and then if you look at the description it says that a user could be a student or a teacher so student is a type of user teacher is also a type of user but for students I need to store also the amount of scholarship number, the scholarship that is given to the student. And I also have some different relationships for the teachers and students. Teachers are giving courses, students are taking courses, for example. To have some distinction for the children, we are using the easy relationship. And it's indicated with a equilateral triangle on top of this triangle we are writing is a and about the triangle we have a single parent so in maybe some other designs that could be multiple parents but in ER diagrams there is only single parent because these children are going to inherit the parents attributes so attributes attribute number one, number two, and number three is going to be also included in each of these children. Plus, if the parent has some relation, so relations, we are going to see it in a minute, but let's say parent has a car relation. This means that if we have an is a relationship, child number one, could also be in this relationship, parent has car. On top of that, we need some difference between the children. So otherwise we don't need this is a relationship. If this is going to only function as a 
so Fuad says, is it like subclass relation? Yes, it is kind of like that. We inherit the parents' functions and also the variables. So it's like subclass relation. So if it is going to just talk about the type of the user, for example, let's say I have a student entity set and I would like to indicate whether this student is a beginner, intermediate or advanced level student. But if I'm not going to use this children to include some additional attributes or to include some additional relationship capabilities. So I'm saying relationship capabilities because whenever some entity set is connected to a relation, it doesn't mean that it has to be in that relation. It could be used or not. But if there is no difference between these children, then you can just have an attribute for it. So for storing a student, I could also write the level of that student as a text, for example. So it defines some hierarchy, but additionally, we are actually introducing new attributes or new relationships. It can be uh, multiple levels. For example, I have student is a manager. Sorry, uh, I have user is a manager, user is a worker. So for workers, I'm also storing an additional salary. For managers, I'm storing account number and the department's name. And for workers, I have further categorization. I have researchers and technicians. And for researchers, I'm storing the university name, for example. For technicians, I'm also storing the specialty. And these uh, child uh, entities could be in different relationships as well. Additionally, so since the child are inheriting the attributes, they also get the primary keys. So the primary key of parent is attribute number one. Therefore, the primary key of the children are going to be the same attribute as well. So going back to our description, it says that a user could be a student or a teacher. For students, you should also store the amount of scholarship. So I have this is a triangle. I have teacher and student below the triangle. The parent is the user entity set. So we are not always showing these attributes uh, to focus on some uh, specific parts, but these uh, attributes of the user are still there. And for students, I have this additional scholarship attributes. So let's talk about relationships. It is used for storing information about multiple entity sets together. So we are, this time, relating two different entities or more. We show relationships using the diamond shapes and the relationships can have its own attributes as well. So in this uh, example, entity one and entity two, we have some relationship in between them. And for this relationship, we are storing an additional attribute. So each of these entities have their own primary keys. So for example, let's say these are product and categories, and we would like to relate products to different categories. Let's say in my product table, I have water, soda, chocolate, bread, for example, and the categories are drink, bakery, sweet, and toy. So for each category, I have a category ID, and for each product as well, I have the product no. These are the primary keys of these tables. And while I'm relating these different entries of the tables, it is going to be again like a table. So everything that we show in an ER diagram, entities and relationships, they are actually stored like a table. And in that table for the in relationship, I can write the product number and the category ID to relate a product to a category. So for example, in here, for water, water, I have the product number one. And for the category, I can say it's a drink. For soda as well, I can say it's a drink. For chocolate, maybe it's sweet. Uh, or, okay, uh, I wrote for chocolate bakery by mistake. It should be a sweet. Or maybe the chocolate has its own category, etc. 
so we are actually keeping the primary keys of the related entities in our relationship in this in table and they are called foreign keys inside this table so primary keys of the connected entity sets are used as foreign keys inside the relationship these foreign key attributes are already indicated through the connecting lines so we are not including this attribute separately so for the in relationship since I have a line that is going to the product entity I know that in this table I should store the primary key of the product entity since in is also connected to category entity set I know that I should store some category ID in this table these lines indicate that so I don't need any additional attributes in my ER diagram but let's say while assigning a category if I also need to store some additional information maybe I need to store some description saying that why this product is in this category then that description should be shown in the ER diagram but for the foreign keys the lines that are connecting relationships to entities already talking about I need to store these foreign keys so you just need to include an attribute to a relationship if it is an additional attribute for that relationship with relationships we can have arrows or bold lines while going to the entity sets so the arrows they are about cardinality cardinality is how many of one entity could be matched with how much of the other one so there are several types starting with many to many if these both lines are without an arrow the, if these both sides are solid lines then it means that many of this entity could be matched with many of the other one and for the other one the vice versa so many of the right side could be matched with the many of the uh, one on the left side so if we uh, talk about our example in this case one product can be in multiple categories so for one product I can match this product with multiple categories and in one category there can be multiple products a category can be matched with multiple products in this table right now if it is many to many for product number one I can match it with product number one I can also go and write product number one again and I can match it with a different category for example then I will be saying water is a drink and a toy maybe some for some cases this might make sense and for some others it might not make sense so maybe there is a sweet drink I can make it in the both categories for example with one-to-one -one relationships we are matching at most one from each side so in our example it says one product can be in at most one category and in one category there can be at most one product for making categories it is not very useful so in this example it says that if I match product number one with any of the categories then I cannot use that category again in my table and I cannot use that product in my table again for products that's okay but if I include some category IDs and category names most likely I would like to use them for multiple products in this case using a one-to-one -one relation is not very useful because then I'm matching one uh, category with only one product for one-to-one -one case it is more rare than the other types of cardinality so with one-to-one -one case it could be like something that only belongs to one user and such things are if I need to include them for every user for example let's say that this is this could be the passport for example so not every user is going to have a passport but if a user has a passport it should be exactly one and for the passport as well 
it should belong to exactly one user. So such cases I, we have one-to-one -one cardinality. We also have one-to-many. It matches one of uh, the one side to many of the other. So looking at our example, it is one product can be in at most one category and in one category there can be multiple products. So if we don't have arrows, it's many to many. If we have if we have arrow on both sides, it's one to one. And with the one to many case, we have one arrow. And sometimes people confuse this. So whether I should put the arrow on the right side or, or on on the left side. So we could make this analogy. So in this example, one owner could have many dogs, but for a dog, let's say there could be at most one owner. So I'm saying at most one because some dogs could have no owner. Some owners could have no dog. So this is not some restriction about that. But if a dog has an owner in this description, it says that there could be at most one owner. There is either one owner or there is no owner for a dog so if you look the leashes on the dog sides kind of resemble this triangle so it's like the triangle in our ER diagram so it should be on the dog side towards the diamond shape so there is also a different notation a different ER diagram style that puts the arrows next to the entity sets and in our notation the arrows if there is an arrow it's always next to this diamond shape so it's always towards this diamond shape and we are kind of describing which side this arrow should be included in so in this product example the products are like dogs for a product there could be at most one category but for a category, there could be multiple products. We also have participation constraints. So we show it using bold lines. If there is a bold line on any of the sides, it means that every entity in this entity set, or we can also say that every row, every uh, data in this entity set should participate in this defined relationship so for example if i would like to say that every product should be included in this in relationship meaning that every product is going to be in some category i can have a bold line on the product side if i want i can include this bold bold, bold lines on both sides meaning that for every category as well there should be at least one product and for every product there should be at least one category and we can mix and match cardinality and participation constraints together so for example if i have a bold line with an arrow on product side then i'm saying that each product should be in exactly one category because of the bold line it is going to be saying okay for every product there should be some category and because of the arrow we are saying that it, it can be at most one category and the intersection of these two statements is going to be saying every product should be in exactly one category but for a category there could be multiple products in it and for some categories there could be no products available as well I could have some categories, some existing categories in the category table but they might not be participating in this relationship because they don't have to. We, we don't have a bold line on that side. But for the product side, every product should participate in this relationship because we have this bold line. And going back to our description, it was saying that every student should have one teacher as their advisor, but a teacher may be the advisor of many students. So in this case, a teacher is going to be matched with many students, so arrow is on the student side. I can have many students matched with a teacher. But for a student, it is going to be only matched with one teacher through this advisor relationship. And since it's saying that every student should have one teacher as their advisor, 
it is like saying exactly one teacher. So I'm also including this total participation on the student's side because there should be no student without an advisor. For every student, there should be one teacher as the advisor. Again, we are using the diamond shape for the relationships and the arrows indicate cardinality. They are always next to the diamond shape and bold lines indicate participation. In our description, it also says for each course, you should store a unique course code and an optional description. So this is the first time we are seeing we need to store some course. And for each course, we have the unique course codes and an optional description. So description, it is optional in the table while we are writing some data in it. It can be omitted, but we cannot show this in the ER diagram. So some of the information included here is going to be about later stages of the implementation. While drawing the ER diagram, we cannot show whether something is optional or not. But we are uh, including it as a data requirement. Uh, so what to say is, but generally we have multiple advisors. How do we store them? Do we write multiple advisor diamonds or there is something more practical? So this is the description uh, in this uh, problem. problem. So in the general case, if I need to store multiple advisors for a student, I just don't include this arrow on the student side. So this uh, description is given for a specific problem. So let's say in this school, there can be at most one advisor or exactly one advisor. Uh, and in the general case, this description could be a different description saying that for a student there could be uh, multiple advisors and in that case we just make this in relationship many to many by omitting this uh, arrow on the student side so this is just for this specific description uh, and not for the general case so uh, in the description, it is also saying that every course must be taught by exactly one teacher. On the other hand, a teacher could teach many courses. So from here, so we already included the course entity. Then we are talking about some relationship between our existing entity sets. So we have the teacher entity set, we have the course entity sets. And we are talking about some relation in between the existing items of these entities. So it says every course, course must be taught by exactly one teacher. So between the teacher and course teaching. On the other hand, a teacher could teach many courses from the other side, the courses given by the teacher. So which name you give to your relationship is something that you decide, but like it could be read by both ways. So teacher is giving the course, course is given by a teacher. And in this case, it says that for every course, there should be exactly one teacher. Again, we are not talking about the general case, but according to this specific description, for a course, I can only match exactly one teacher. Because of that, this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. And for every course, if I have a course, that course should be taught by some teacher. Because of that, I include this bold line, meaning the total participation. So with relationships, there are two different cases. These are ternary and aggregate relationships. Actually, ternary relationship is not that, uh, like, not that special. It's just more than two ad, uh, more than two entities are in some relationship and this is just a special naming for this i can have more than three entities in some relationship as well so there is no li limits i can uh, connect lots of entities to a single relationship but for the turner case there is a special name and uh, the cardinality and participation rules still apply to this, 
meaning that for example if i have a one uh, if i have an arrow on each side this is a one to one to one relationship meaning that one teacher could appear once in this teacher's relationship similarly one class and one course appear once inside this teacher's relationship then it will mean that a teacher can teach a course in some class but then this teacher is not going to teach any other courses that course will not be taught by any other teacher or in any other class and also if we use that class once that class will not be used again so which is not a logical way but according to the description this might be what you need to do in the ER diagram changing the arrows for example if I have omit the arrows on class and teacher side how to read this one so while reading a Turner relationship just omit one side for example if I do not include the class entity I can read it as one teacher can teach many courses but for a course it can be taught by only one teacher if I omit the teacher entity if I look at the class and course one class in, in one class there could be many courses taught but for a course it can be only one class and if I omit the course entity it's a many-to-many -many relationship a teacher could teach in many classes and in a class many teachers can teach some course so with Turner relationships uh, this is uh, how you can read uh, the participation and cardinality constraints other than that this is similar to our basic relationships we also have aggregate relationships let's say in our example so this example is for teachers are teaching courses and always for teaching we assign some class let's say the courses are online we are not using specific class accounts and some courses are not online let's say sometimes we would like to assign a class for a teacher that is teaching a course but not always in this specific case we can include an aggregate relationship meaning that I have an existing relationship between teacher and course so teachers are teaching courses but on top of that sometimes for this teaching activity I could I, I want to assign a classroom in this case actually what I want to do is to connect some relationship to an existing relationship but in the ER diagram this is not how we show it in the ER diagram to connect one relationship to another relationship we encapsulate that existing relationship with the dashed rectangles so I have a dashed rectangle around the existing relationship and this relationship also or this dashed line dashed rectangle also covers the entities that are connected to the existing relationship so why we are showing it like that because remember for the relationship I'm storing some foreign keys so these are the foreign keys of the teacher and course tables in the teachers relationship since I'm not including these foreign keys as attributes I'm not explicitly showing them these lines are showing them I also include them into the dash rectangle and together this relationship and these entities they kinda act like an entity so that's why we have this rectangular shape, shape. and for this in relationship this teacher teaching course activity it acts like an entity and then I can include it in this new relationship and we are not wasting space if we are not assigning a co uh, classroom for every teaching activity in that case for the Turner relationship for the Turner relationship in the table I have columns for teacher class and course primary keys and always I also have some column for the classroom in in the Turner case it makes sense to use them always if a teacher is teaching a course it should be in a class 
a class is always assigned. We expect that. For, for some of the rows, we might omit it. Maybe it's not optional. But if we are omitting the classroom for lots of entries, then we would waste space. And in order not to waste space in that case, so this is again kind of related to the description or kind of related to our problem. Whether we include it always or sometimes, this is according to the description of the pro problem. And in the case that we are not assigning classroom always, using the aggregate relationship makes sense because instead of assigning a classroom to a teacher or a to a, or to a course, we are assigning it to the activity itself. So for example, if I just assign the classroom to the teacher, maybe that teacher is not teaching any courses or maybe that teacher is teaching lots of courses. Maybe one class is not enough and for courses as well, I could have just connect course to the in relationship instead of having this exit relationship. But then I'm assigning the classrooms to the courses, but maybe some of the courses are not taught by anyone. Then again, uh, I'm not using those classrooms to make sure that I'm assigning the classroom to this activity itself. We are using the aggregate relationship. Uh, Saad says, what would be the foreign keys in the in relationship case? Uh, case? Okay. Uh, for this case, the, uh, the foreign keys in in would be the primary key of class and the primary key of this teacher's relationship. We are going to talk about the primary keys of the relationships in the second lab, but for now, know that uh, Going back, okay, we have the foreign keys in the in table. This is the relationship. But again, for the relationship, we are going to talk about some primary key. And the primary key of a relationship will be uh, defined by the cardinality constraints. If it is many to many, then I can match for example, product number one with category ID one and then product number one with category ID two, etc. If it is many to many, the primary key of the relationship is the combination of its foreign keys. In the one to many case or in the one to one case, it is going to be the foreign key that appears only once in the table. For example, if this was a product is matched with only one category, but for a category there could be multiple products. Then by knowing the product's ID, I can find a unique row in this in table. Then that would be the uh, single primary key of the relationship. Going back to this example, in this case, it's a one to many relationship between the teacher and course. So for a teacher, there could be multiple courses. But for a course that there could be just one teacher, meaning that if I know the course's primary key, then I can find a unique row in the teacher's relationship. So for the in, I have the primary key of the class and the primary key of the teachers, which is the primary key of the course only. So for this relationship course code, maybe it is going to be the primary key. And for in, my foreign keys are going to be course code and the class ID. And again, since this is a many to many relationship, the primary key of this relationship is going to be the combination of its foreign keys. But we are going to talk about this subject in lab number two. Just for now, know that aggregate relationships are available. And if you would like to uh, define a relationship on top of an existing relationship, this is how we show it. And going back to our description, uh, it says that students can enroll into courses that are taught by certain teachers. In this case, you should store which student has enrolled to which course taught by which teacher, as well as a grade in the range 0 to 100. But let's give a break now and we are going to continue at 9.30.
Any questions before we start? So the labs are going to be recorded and we are going to upload them and send you the link, link or we are going to put it on the website and send you an email about that. For this material that we are using in the lab, we are again going to include links. So for these slides, you will be able to access them. There is also a, a separate handout for you to like read it through. We are going to also send them. And for the files, we are going to put them on the website as well. So we were talking about this aggregate relationships and also the ternary relationships together because there could be some decision making in between them in this course case. If classroom is not always used, if it is rarely used and if it should be assigned to this activity itself instead of to the teacher or the course, we can use the aggregate relationships. And going back to our descriptions, it says that students can enroll in courses that are taught by certain teachers. So students are not enrolling to the course itself. And this relationship is not about a teacher itself. It says that a teacher teaching a course. So we are actually enrolling to this activity. So more hints about this aggregate relationship it says that in this case, you should store which student, so which student has enrolled to which course taught by which teacher. So it is saying that we need to somehow store the information about the student and also the information about which teacher is teaching which course. So instead of just connecting to a course, we are connecting it to a teacher giving the course, teaching the course. And in this case, we also need to stay, uh, store a grade attribute. And for this grade attribute, it says that it should be in range between zero and a hundred, but this specification is not shown in the ER diagram as well. So it is some uh, rule for the later stages. But in the ER diagram, we show our data requirements and that data requirement is for a student to be able to enroll into a teacher teaching a course. We also have weak entity sets. They are kind of rare. And the weak entities cannot be defined or identified uh, on their own. So let's go through the description. It says students can have medical reports. For each medical report, you should store a date and a description. Each student can have many medical reports. However, each medical report must belong to exactly one student. One student can have at most one medical report on the same date. So this is, again, we are not talking about uh, the, a real life case. For this example, for a medical report, we only have the date and the description. There is no unique ID for a medical report. We identify a medical report through a student that it belongs to. And this is possible due to this uh, rule saying that one student can have at most one medical report on the same date. So for a student, I can give only one medical report for the same date. For some other dates, this student can get another medical report, but on the certain date, for a student, I can give only one medical report. Then a student is going to have multiple medical reports on different dates, but let's say Ali is getting these medical reports and Aisha can get a medical report on the same date as Ali. To discriminate these two reports, I need the student that this report belongs to. So I need to know the student and also the date in order to identify a unique medical report. So the medical reports, I am not able to find a unique medical report by itself. I need the student's primary key. In this case, I know that I need to use a weak entity set 
and it's shown by a thick rectangle for the weak entity and this relationship that connects the weak entity to the strong entity is also using bold lines so this is also called a weak relationship because for a medical report we identify it through the student that it belongs to and for weak entities we are not talking about the primary key we are actually showing the partial key in the ER diagram if I am able to find a unique attribute for the medical report then I don't need to make it weak it's weak because the partial key the date is not unique within all the reports the combination of date and the student's ID is going to be unique for a medical report so for the partial key we show it with the dashed underline and we have this tick lines for the entity and the relationship symbols and we are going to talk about some common mistakes about weak entities as well but be careful about weak entities because uh, if you think it's like this if you say okay if there is a dependency among my entities it doesn't always talk about it being weak so we are going to talk it about a minute but let's see this last part as well so in the description it says users can send messages among themselves in this case one side is the receiver and the other is the sender you should store a text message and a date for each sending operation each sender can send to many receivers and many senders can send to the same receiver on the same date a particular sender can send at most one message to a particular receiver again we are not talking about this general uh, real life example of sending messages this is only for this description so sending is among two different users so the same entity sets can be connected to a relationship multiple times so in this case we are connecting it two times but then to identify the role we are writing the role of this connection on top of the line so the one side is the sender for this relationship and the other side is the receiver and while we are uh, creating a table for the send relationship we are going to have a sender column a receiver column but what is being sent we also need to store this message attribute it is going to be a text for example and we also need to store the date when we send this message plus it says that on the same date a particular sender can send at most one message to a particular receiver so in this scenario we made the message an attribute of the send relationship one other possibility could be to include a separate entity for the message the message content could be the attribute of that message entity and in that message entity I can have some unique primary key maybe it's the ID of the message maybe I'm assigning a unique ID to each messages in that case I'm going to have a ternary relationship user is connected to send twice and I'm going to send, uh, connect the message entity to the send and then I don't need to store the attributes in the relationship so that's a design choice but to show an example we made it like this the information was saying that okay if the date was not part of the primary key for the send relationship I'm going to have my foreign keys as the primary key of the send table so for send relationship the primary key is going to be the sender and receiver IDs so I have one user that is sending one user that is receiving and the combination of them is going to be the primary key of the send relationship and if the combination of them is the uh, primary key then this is going to mean that if Ali sent a message to Aisha then Ali cannot send another message to Aisha again 
because the primary keys cannot have duplicates. So as a combination, if the sender and receiver IDs are my only primary key, then the combination could appear only once in the send relationship. But I'm including date attributes as a part of my primary key. So the sender is actually this foreign key. We are not explicitly showing it in the ER diagram, but the sender is my foreign key. Receiver is my foreign key. Therefore, they are the primary keys of the send relationship. And date is also the primary keys, a part of the primary key. So for send, my primary key is the sender ID, receiver ID, and the date. So these three things, their combination cannot have duplicate values, then Ali can send a message to Aisha on some other date. So if I'm changing the dates, Ali can send a message to Aisha multiple times. And this fits the description. On the same date, a particular sender can send at most one message to a particular receiver. So it's not the real life example, but for this description, this ER diagram is satisfying. But in the general case, messages uh, are going to most likely be separate entities. You might assign some unique IDs to them. This is for just for the example to show that for relationships, okay, the foreign keys are the primary key. Plus there can be some other attributes that are part of the primary key. And for this relationships primary key concept, we are going to talk about in detail in lab two. But for now, let's see some common mistakes that people do. So for attributes, we always connect attributes to a single entity set. So we are not connecting attributes together. In some different style of ER diagram, they might be doing that. But in this notation, we are not doing this. For attributes, we are not using tick lines or directed lines. It's always a solid, simple line. The relationship arrows, they point towards the diamond shape, not towards the entities. So if we are making an aggregate relationship in the dash dash rectangle, there should be only one relationship. If you include more than one relationship in the dash rectangle, remember we were actually connecting two relationships together. So one existing relationship in the dash rectangle and this aggregate relationship. If you include more than one relationship in the dash rectangle, we don't know which relationship that we should uh, connect April to. The, for the weak entities, the partial key, uh, or sorry, uh, the partial key of the weak entity cannot have a solid underline. To show the partial key, we are using the dashed underline. If you make it a solid underlining, it means that it is unique, but in the weak entities, this is not the case. And a weak entity cannot depend on another weak entity. So if a student has a medical report, if this is weak, if we need the student's ID as well to identify a medical report, then you cannot say that for a medical report, there is also some another weak ent entity that's depending on it. So having such a chain defeats the purpose of the weak entities, because then you are saying, okay, I cannot identify a medical report by itself, but then I can connect it to like a strong entity to some other weak entity, which doesn't make sense. And again, a weak entity cannot be connected to a non weak relationship. So for this weak entity, I'm saying that it's identified through this weak relationship in relation to a student. But then if I try to connect it to some other entity, with a non-weak relationship, if I say, okay, a doctor is giving this medical report, but I cannot identify this medical report by itself. So the weak entity cannot be connected to a weak relationship. In such case, if you need to assign a doctor to the medical report as well, then maybe you can make up some primary key for the medical report so that it's no longer weak. So 
making some central entities weak is not a good idea weak entities are like in the corner they have just one weak relationship to some existing entity etc so if we look at this is the whole diagram that we need to uh, draw for this description and this is uh, not the one so sorry, sorry uh, let me say it like that uh, there could be multiple correct solutions multiple correct er diagrams for a given problem so some of the things could be designed in a different way and we are going to use draw oil which is a general uh, diagram drawing software it has the online version as well to draw this diagram or to replicate this uh, diagram so let's uh, if you want to follow along you can go to the course website and below here we have this a link for draw.io or you can just type uh, www.draw.io there is also the desktop versions available so if you want to install it on your uh, computer uh, there are some versions of it but we are going to use the online version so I'm going to click on this link and when you open this website first it asks you to choose a device to store your files so you, you can have some cloud options let's just use the device option for now and we have the option to create a new diagram and we can also open our existing diagrams uh, we are going to upload the finished version of this diagram as well if you want to play with them so for now I'm going to create a new diagram so there are some templates for it and in somewhere there is also the entity relationship diagram uh, template but this is not using our style so remember there are different styles for ER diagrams so since this does not fit our style we are going with the blank diagram option so this is our file name so let's maybe call it lab1 and the extension for draw files is that draw and you can also choose a different uh, file type but if you choose for example an image type then when you or oh, actually it says editable maybe it's editable but going with the draw wire files is going to be the better option so I'm going to click on create to create this new diagram and I need to save it so remember uh, since we choose the device for it it's going to save it on the device not on uh, the cloud options so let me just find some place to put it so the extension I guess you also need to write it here but if you omit the extension if it is just lab file that's also okay so we created our diagram and in here we have our workspace in, in the middle on the left we have a toolbar for different shapes and on the right side we have the options for a chosen shape so if uh, for example some of them so we are not using using the outline but if the right panel is not open you can open it through this button it's the format panel and this if this is hide it you can like uh, enlarge this left toolbar I guess from the view you can also get the format panel uh, that's not the scratch pad but okay so for the left toolbar it's I guess always open you can just uh, make it larger if it's hidden so let's uh, start going through our uh, uh, our elements in the ER diagram so for entities we were using rectangles if you click on the rectangle shape it will bring it to our workspace and if you click on any of the shapes you can move them around with the mouse uh, if you click and hold in this blue circles you can 
change the size of this object when you put your mouse on top of the shape there are like uh, some little arrows around it when you click on that arrow you can put a following shape but remember in our case we are not directly connecting entities together so we need the attributes connected to the entities and entities are connected to the relationships so this functionality does not help us that much because it also puts the directed arrows it might be confusing that's what i want to say because this is for something like a flow diagram and in the er diagram we don't use the arrows always and the arrows are rotated in this case for example it doesn't help a lot so that's why we are not going to use that functionality so if you choose any of the items you can right click you can copy you can delete that item let's delete that one uh, by holding your mouse button you can choose multiple items if you hit the delete key on your keyboard you can again delete the items let me uh, create a new rectangle again and let's say this is for the user while a shape is selected you can start typing on your keyboard and it will write on top of that shape so i wrote user in this case Again, uh, I have this zoom in and zoom out buttons. So let me zoom in a little so that you can see it better. And if you hold the space key on your keyboard, dragging the mouse around, you can look through your workspace. And if your mouse has a wheel, if you click on the mouse wheel, you can again drag the workspace around let me uh, resize the rectangle now let's say i would like to include my attributes so for attributes we are using ellipse shapes i included a new ellipse shape by clicking on the shape and while this uh, ellipse is selected i'm going to write name on top of it so let me resize it put it somewhere for any of the items if you right click on them there is the option to duplicate and it's very useful because when you duplicate the item you have the exact size whenever I create a new item it has the default size so I'm going to delete this ellipse shape now but if you duplicate the item uh, or the shape uh, it has the same size which is useful for us so I'm going to click on the duplicated one and this time I'm going to write surname on top of it maybe I can resize it so that the text shows better I'm going to duplicate it once the hotkey is Control D so if you right click on the shape you see that and for this one this is going to be the password for a user again this is following the description that we just looked at and we also need a ID for the user so while a shape is selected there are certain options on this right toolbar so for example for the shape there are the style options and for the text that's inside that shape there is this text options so for example if I choose ID under the text panel I can have the text underlined so if I choose the underline option it will underline my text meaning that ID is going to be the primary key of the user table but for now, we need to connect the attributes to the entity. And to do that, remember, we were using solid lines without an arrow. So I'm going to click on this line here, and it will bring me a new line. And if you select the line, so you can move the line around if you hold it from any black part. If you hold it from its ends, indicated with blue circles, you change its endpoints there is also some slight circle in the middle sometimes people by mistake click on that and it is used for creating arcs so we don't need arcs in our case so i'm going to use ctrl z on my keyboard and you also have this undo and redo buttons on top you can use them as well to undo the operation so 
lines have uh, ends and any shape has anchor points so without selecting a shape maybe it's hard to see from the screen but uh, when you come on top of a shape you see little crosses blue cross marks around the shape so for any shape there are multiple anchor points one anchor point is the center of a shape so if I choose my line and click and hold on one of its ends when I move it on top of a shape I can connect it to one of these anchor points indicated with crosses or if I put it into the middle it anchors the line to the middle of the shape most of the time we would like to anchor it into the middle part into the center part because whenever I carry this ellipse around the line will follow so for the other end of the line I'm going to connect it to the center of the user table uh, user entity then for like different positions the line will follow through the center points of these two items so the other option is to anchor it to some specific anchor so for example on the right bottom side of the rectangle I have an anchor point if I anchor it there it will try to go to that bottom right anchor point and if you are adjusting your items around it's not very helpful so most of the time it is better to connect it to the center point so for now I'm going to choose this existing line and use Control D to duplicate it and I'm going to connect the attributes to my user entity so I connected uh, all four of them and maybe if I would like to adjust my items around then it's uh, going to keep the connection in a clear way so let's now go with the easy relationship so remember the types of users we have are teachers and students so we have teachers and students and they are going to be the children of this user entity so I'm going to choose the user entity use control D to duplicate it and this is going to be for the teacher I'm going to have another copy and this is going to be for the student and for is I need the triangle I'll click on the triangle and this is not pointing in the right direction to point it in the right direction while this triangle is selected I'm going to click on this rotation symbol so sometimes people click and hold but if you click and hold when you write something on it it's also rotated so I'm going to undo that with Control Z if you want to rotate the text as well don't click and hold just click it multiple times so I click on this rotation arrow three times and then I can write is on top of it I can resize my triangle and while you are writing something so for example I wrote user here if I want to edit it back I can double click on the text so I wrote is on top of the triangle if I double click I can edit the text and I can write multiple lines of text so I'm able to write multiple lines of text so to put, to put the text in the middle I can just go into the next line so I just hit the enter key to position it in a better way and then it's going to be the same thing I need some lines to connect them so for the top parts I have the user and for the other ones I'm connecting it to the student entity to the is a triangle and also for the teacher and to the triangle and with the triangle remember we need to position them so that the parent is above and the children are below so for the is a triangle only it makes sense to connect uh, the lines to the anchor points so if I need to move the teacher around 
I will see that okay if I make it on top it doesn't make sense so it should be somewhere below the triangle but if you are like putting it in a good position connecting it to the center is also okay but for the easy relationship I suggest you connect it to the bottom and top anchor points so remember for the students I need an additional scholarship attribute so I'm going to duplicate one of the attributes change the text maybe resize it and duplicate another line to connect this new uh, attribute to my student entity there is a relationship between student and teachers it's the advisor relationship and for relationships we need the diamond symbol I will create a new diamond here write advisor on top of it and I'm going to resize it so that it fits into this part and I'm going to duplicate a line for the teacher and another line for the students and remember for relationships we have cardinality and participation constraints and for cardinality so this was one teacher is the advisor of a student for a student there can be only one teacher advisor but a teacher can advise multiple students so I need an arrow on student side to put an arrow into an existing solid line I'm going to choose that line and on this right panel under style for this line I have a bunch of style options so I can change the color etc in the ER diagram uh, in the ER diagram that we are using colors does not mean much so we are not using any color options but uh, for the arrows we have the line start and line end option to put an arrow or some other symbol but when you have some line on your workspace you don't really know which point is the start point which point is the ending point under a range or I guess under okay for lines it doesn't show up so there is really not an option to know which is the ending and which is the starting point so I'm going to just choose one of the sides to have an arrow and now it's on the wrong side so instead of getting rid of it and putting an arrow on the other side what you can do is so let's say I put an arrow and it's on the wrong side just right click on this line and choose the reverse option so the line will be reverse the hotkey for it is Control R while that line is selected if you hit Control R in on your keyboard it will reverse the direction of that line then the arrow is on the correct side and remember in the description it was also saying that for each student there has to be exactly one advisor so there should be no student without an advisor if there is a student that student is going to participate in this advisor relationship so I need a bold line on the student side so while this line is still selected on this right panel I have the line width so it's currently one point so I'm going to make it two or three so that it's now a bold line then let's uh, create the relationship between a course and a teacher so I'm going to duplicate teacher this is going to be for a course and I need two more attributes here I'm using control D one is going to be the course code and the other is going to be the description and for course codes it is the primary key of the course entity therefore I need to underline it I can click on this shape go into the text and choose underline or the hotkey for it is control U so while this shape is selected I can hit control U on my keyboard to have the underlining if I want to get rid of the underline I can hit control U again so I'm going to duplicate some other lines to connect the course to its attributes and I need a relationship between teacher and course it's going to be the gives relationship or the teachers relationship so while that shape is selected I'm going to just start typing and it will replace that existing text and I'm going to also have some 
arrows uh, or, or lines to connect teacher to gifts and connect course to gifts. Again, this is a one-to-many relationship with total participation on course site. So therefore, I choose the line on course site under style. I put an arrow on one end and this time it was on the correct side. But if it is not, I can use Ctrl R or I can right click on the line to choose the reverse option. And again, I'm going to make it thicker so that it indicates total participation. Then for a student to enroll to an existing course that is taught by a teacher, we were using the aggregate relationship. So for the aggregate relationship, I'm going to include a new rectangle as well. And if you move the items around, you will see that the later coming ones are on top of the existing ones. So there is some layering going on. So in order to not overlap the existing items with these ones, with this new one, I'm going to right click on it and choose to back option. So it is going to send it to the back and you only need for the aggregate relationships. So again, for an aggregate relationship, I need to enclose the relationship and the entities that are connected to that relationship. Whether I include the attributes or not is something you decide. So this is not a, this is not a must. So if you just cover the relationship and the entities that are connected to it, it's enough. But if you can manage it, you can also include the attributes of those entities as well in the inside the dashed rectangle. And this is not dashed yet. So to make it dashed, I'm going to choose this rectangle and under style, we have this line pattern. So it's now a solid line. If I choose here, I can make it dashed as well. So now it's a dashed rectangle. And one thing to be careful, when you change the style of some shape, whenever you create a new shape, for example, I create a new ellipse, that new shape is also going to follow the same style. So I can make it solid and then the new shapes will have the same style. But if you are duplicating items from your existing ones, for example, for this aggregate relationship, I need another diamond symbol. If I just duplicate it, it will have the exact style of the existing item. But whenever you are creating something new, uh, be careful about that. Just like, don't expect that uh, whenever you create a new rectangle, it is going to have the solid simple lines. It is actually going to have the last style that you used. So if you are not very careful, maybe you might include some wrong symbols. Uh, so I'm just saying, don't forget to change them so that they are in the correct manner. So I need a line to connect to my gives relationship. And this time I'm not connecting to something inside the dash rectangle. <clears throat> I'm going to connect it to the dash rectangle at itself. So I'm going to connect it directly to this dash rectangle and I'm going to duplicate it one more to connect it to the student side. So this is going to be named as enrolled. And for this one, I need some other attributes. And this attribute is going to be the grade that this student is getting from that course. So I also need to store this grade attribute. For the weak entities, so I'm going to duplicate the student once more. This is going to be the medical report. Maybe I can resize it so that it looks better. I would like to make it a thick shape, right? To do that again, while this rectangle is selected under this line options, I have the line width so I can make it thicker. I'm going to include the weak relationship as well. It is going to be called as, and for this one as well, I'm going to make it thicker. I also need a tick arrow, so I can just duplicate this existing tick arrow 
connected to the medical report and to this weak relationship has and I'm going to duplicate one simple line to connect student to this has relationship and I need two more attributes the one is for description the other is for the date I need simple lines to connect them to the weak entity one thing in Draw.io, we don't have dashed underlines, so we cannot have a solid underline because this is the weak entity. I need a dashed underline, but for the text options, there is no dashed underline. So we are going to use this dashed line for the underlining. So I'm going to include a new dashed line. So right now, since the last style I used was a tick line for this relationship, this new dashed line is also having some tick lines or tick uh, line width, let's say. So I will make it one point. So that was what I'm saying about being careful because if it is this, we understand what it's uh, for this one we understand but if it is a line for example if I so f let me first undo this and try to say what I'm trying to say so let's say I included a new rectangle I have the solid lines I made this tick and let's say I included a new line to connect this entity to somewhere if I don't realize that this is tick it will cause a problem because tick lines that are connecting entities to the relationships mean something and if I am uh, not aware of that that will be a problem for some cases it will not be a problem but be careful about that so I'm going to make it one point line width and remember we talked about some anchor points around the shapes so I'm going to for this one connect it to the right and left bottom anchor points so for each end of this line if i connect it correctly whenever i move this ellipse shape the line will also follow if i don't anchor it so you can somehow put it somewhere it's actually not that easy to put it into a random position but let's say i try to manage somehow to put it in a way that it looks as if it's underlining the text but if it is not anchored whenever I move this item around the line will not follow so it is better to anchor this line to this left and right anchor points so that then whenever you resize or move the ellipse shape around the line will also follow so we have our partial key as well so we also need the send relationship between users so let me carry this id around and maybe i can include it here so i'm going to duplicate one relationship it's going to be called as send and for this one i need two attributes so i'm going to copy them from somewhere and one of them is going to be the message and the other one is going to be the date and remember for the attribute names the names are unique for the entity that it is connected to meaning that for a user I have the name attribute for example I cannot have two name attributes for the user so one of them maybe should be name two etc the names cannot have duplicate values for the same entity but for different entities I can have I can use the same naming so for this relationship I can have a date uh, attributes for some other relationship or entity set as well I can use the same attribute name but within some table it should be unique I'm talking about the names of the columns so I'm going to connect these to the send relationship these are the attributes of the send relationship and for the date and also let me also show what I did by mistake if you instead of just clicking on these arrows while the shape is selected if you click and hold it will create 
a directed arrow which is again not something that we would like to use so I'm just undoing that mistake so the date is going to be the primary key for this relationship uh, on top of the foreign key primary keys and I need to connect user twice to the send relationship right one is for the sender role one is for the receiver role and if I do it through the centers then it will show up as just one single line so if I go and connect it twice it will just show up as just one single line therefore for this case as well I need to use these different anchor points so I'm going to use this top right anchor point and bottom right anchor point to connect my lines to the user entity and for the send as well I'm going to use some of these existing uh, anchor points around the shape so that uh, it's viewed better but then I need to be careful when I'm moving the items around for example let's say I would like to choose these multiple items and move them around then I need to fix the positions that I connected them to but for the other items so for example for this medical report part if I want to move it around they are easier to move around because they are connected to the center anchor points so one final thing I need to do is to write the roles of these uh, uh, relationships so one part is going to be the sender so I'm going to click on one of these lines and start typing and it will appear on top of my line and if I want to position this text while this line is selected you will see some uh, yellow diamond shape around if you click and hold it you can move the text around as well so for some positioning you might need to move it around for this positioning it's okay I will choose the other line and write receiver on top of it so that my line appears on top of there so our diagram is finished if we would like to save it we have the options under file if we choose the save option it will save and since we have chosen the device option it will save it on our device so you can also save it as a different file for example let's say L1 and it will save and download it uh, to your uh, device let's say so let me just maybe uh, open a new file so so that you see that I lost the diagram no I, I, I saved it on my device but it's not online that's what I'm trying to say so let me go to draw again so I'm going to choose open existing diagram and I need to find my drawio file so it was called the last one we saved was called L1 we used the save as option but this is also the first one that we like used control S option and this is the file that we can further work on it and then when we save it as a drawio file it can be edited again but sometimes so in this for our project you don't need to but sometimes you may need to export it as an image file as well that's also possible in drawio so if i choose export as i have the png option pdf option etc but if you export it, it like that so let me export it like this let's save to device this is not editable so this is just some image file and uh, you cannot load it into drawio and continue editing in the beginning there was there was some file formats that was saying it's an image but editable i haven't tried it but like the file format that we are going to use is going to be the dot drawia extension so that uh, completes lab number one so now we are able to draw ER diagrams using Drawio and for the project's first stage, for the design stage number one, 
we just want you to uh, draw an ER diagram according to the description for your project. So the project topics will be uh, announced or, or in a couple of days uh, according to your group forms we are going to distribute the project topics. For now you might just read through all three topics but uh, in the end uh, in a couple of days you are going to be given one of the topics and for that specific topic you are going to draw the ER diagram. Any questions, problems? Can you, uh, can you show how did you uh, make the external rectangular, dashed rectangular again? Mm -hmm. Yes, that one. Okay, so for that I just created a new rectangle and while I have this new rectangle to make it dashed while this rectangle is selected on this right panel I have the line pattern I choose the dashed option for that and whenever I make this larger it overlaps the existing items I need to send it to back so I just right click it right click and choose to back option then I just enclose my uh, relationship and attributes is it clear yes clear thank you okay thanks any other questions problems by the way during the lab you can interrupt me at any time ask your questions etc so that concludes our lab today. Uh, see you later. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.